warmer weather is on the way. Or coaching football. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say good morning to our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. He has sailed through the Arctic. And he has braved it shirtless at the point of the boats, like Leonardo DiCaprio and the Titanic. But and, yesterday was even cold for him. And the Antarctica, yes, as well. You're right, Rob. I was shivering listening to you tell the, how cold you were at football practice yesterday. Ooh. And keeping those kids out there while you were shivering and you went in to go to the bathroom and came back an hour and a half later and the kids are still there. <laughs> Age has its privilege, Bill. You know that better than anybody. Right. It takes an hour and a half to get back from the bathroom. <laughs> when you are bundled up for winter, it does take about an hour and a half. It does, yeah. It's just feeling layers left and right, man. It's tough. Yesterday was just Arctic. That yeah. was just mm, yeah. nasty. A lot of wind. Oh, yeah. yeah. And sure. that is uh, Maria Lawrence in there as well. Maria, good morning to you. Good morning. Good and to welcome be back. back. Yes. Yeah. Like a month or something. Somebody asked me if I had gotten fired. <laughs> and I was like. From your non-paying job. Yeah, yes. from, from a non-paying. I don't think so. I said I just have had several things going on. So, But busy. it's good to be back. Yeah, you've been busy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You've been here, you've been there. Tell them I've been cold. We're having some additional solar panels put on our roof. And with the wind yesterday and the cold air, we have a very steep roof. I was concerned that someone would forget what they were doing and fall down mm -hmm. as a, as a You weren't up ice. on that roof, were not you, at, at all? all. Okay. Not at all, no. Okay. Now, Bill will swing a sledgehammer and an axe, but he yeah. is not about to climb the roof any longer. Not any longer. Good, right. good plan. Good plan. Yeah. Uh, the... Uh, First guest is Nikki Biagirelli. She is from Hospice of the Panhandle, the CEO. Nikki, good morning to you. Good morning to you all as well. Do I understand that you have a traffic update for us, Nikki? Oh, my goodness. It's been quite the morning. Route 9 is always fun uh, with a lot of traffic, but this morning there was an accident, and we had to figure about five different ways to get to Faith Christian Academy today. Did, did you get through? Did you end up getting everybody we to did. school? We did. Yeah, we did. We oh. hope everyone was okay in the accident. Are you in the office now? Um, I'm not. I'm pulled over in the car calling in. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're not driving and, and every, you're safe along the side of the road, hopefully. <laughs> no, no, no. Right? Yeah, very good. Uh, Nikki, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Maria for a moment here uh, and to Bill because I know we have a few important things to get to and I want to make sure we get the terminology right, Maria. There you go. There you go. Well, I think uh, the plan today was to talk about Light Up a Life, uh, which is set for this weekend at Hospice of the Panhandle. Actually, we begin um, Friday night at, uh, at in Berkeley Springs in front of CNB Bank at 515. Uh, Sunday is um, the largest of our three ceremonies, Light Up a Life, 515 at our campus in Kearneysville. Um, and then Tuesday, again, 515 um, in uh, Romney at Schaefer Funeral Home. So um, always a great event. I'll, I'll uh, punt to Nikki and let her talk a little bit. It is a fundraiser, but so much more. Yeah, absolutely. Really, every December, we um, so many people look forward to the lights that shine brightly in the, uh, in the evening at our, on our campus in Berkeley Springs and in Romney, really for family and friends to have a meaningful way to honor the memory of their loved ones in such a beautiful, peaceful way. And this annual luminary ceremony really provides opportunities um, for people, um, the great people of this community, to reflect to honor and certainly celebrate the lives and legacies of those who've packed on. Um, it's funny, you know, every, year after year, um, I hear some of the same names, um, and it's, this is really for anyone in the community. So some of those same names that I hear weren't necessarily folks that we have cared for um, under hospice care or palliative care, but uh, maybe that people have, you know, just passed on outside of our care. Um, as Maria mentioned, it is a fundraiser for us, and I've talked to you all before, it's a not-for-profit hospice. Donations uh, really allow us to enhance patient and family care support, um, really allow us to reinvest and plan um, for the future in compassionate and of care, and really our advanced illness programs that we have. Um, and year after year, we are amazed at um, and beyond grateful for the generosity again of our community and our sponsors um, really for those proceeds to continue to support our mission. 
Nikki, you said that it was uh, uh, for more than it's for the whole community, more than just hospice, and I think that is exactly the case. And to me, it puts a kind of a different meaning to uh, to Christmas. Christmas is a time to rejoice and to be around loved ones and uh, and good friends. Uh, but the uh, light up for life uh, uh, is a remembrance aspect of that. And uh, whether you have someone that was under hospice care or not, we've all lost someone that was very dear yeah. to us and just driving up and going through all those lights is it's uh it's it's a special special meaning so whether you have someone under hospice care or not i would encourage you to come out and just to just absorb the beauty the the tranquil beauty that's <coughs> that is uh, uh, that's that pathway lit lit up driveway going up to hospice and uh, that's, that's cool. yeah but i'm sorry to interrupt nikki but that's um, part of the, um, you know, part of the meaning, I think, is, um, I, you know, I talked about, and Nikki talked about it being a fundraiser, but so much more. We see families, we see community members who come year after year um, just to look, um, just to find their loved one's name. So one of the, just for those who are unaware, um, what we do is when you dedicate a luminary, we put, a, we put your loved one's name on the luminary. So, and those are arranged up and down hospice lane alphabetically. Um, so I don't want to talk about how the, the amount of work because it's absolutely worth it. Um, but it, it really does take a village to, um, to make that happen. And you are absolutely right. It's, it's so striking. When you think that every one of those lights represents someone that you know, someone that you've loved, one of the things that I do, um, it's sort of my former life getting, uh, uh, getting a hold of me, is before the ceremony starts, we go through and double check to make sure we have every name, every name spelled, every, um, every light that's dedicated by a person, um, that that's all, um, that that's all done accurately. Not to say that we don't miss, but I stop and give pause probably every five or 10 luminaries because I see a person that I've known, someone that I've loved, someone that I've come in contact with in the community. And it's, it's very powerful, very powerful. Very much so. And now that's one aspect of it. There's a couple of other, and to me that's far and away the most important aspect. But there's a couple of other things as well. All the names are read. And all and numerous photographs are also projected. Oh yeah, as yeah, well. yeah. So, yeah. That's right. That's right. We started several years ago um, asking people if they'd like to send in photographs, um, and so we have this elaborate display um, of large TVs in the front of the the hospice window, so the loved ones. Um, photos flash up at the same time kind of a funny little side story rob may appreciate this somebody asked us if we could sync the um the photos with the name reading and i was kind of like wow that's kind of like disney world we're not quite there yet are we nikki uh, no not yet <laughs> Nikki Bidgerelli, our guest here from Hospice of the uh, Panhandle, the CEO. Uh, Nikki, tell me about the day itself for December the 3. Uh, what, uh, what time will you start? What time will you conclude? <laughs> uh, we will begin uh, promptly at 5.15 on Sunday, December the 3rd. Um, and however long it certainly takes us to get through um, all of the names. But the luminaries are lit all through the night, as Bill mentioned. And um, it's very powerful to... Um, drive through in the, the dark and still of the night to see all of the luminaries lit on our campus. And how many will be out this year, Nikki? How many luminaries? Oh my, Maria, I need your help with this. Yeah, I, a, I... Over a thousand. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, actually think 15, 1700, yeah, something it could like that. Be, yeah. It could be, um, and um, I, I have not looked recently because I think... Nikki, I sent to you a list, um, and it looked like there were like 650 donors, but people buy multiple luminaries, so Correct. that's why I think you're probably yeah. right. You're probably closer to the number, Bill. Nikki, how do you get a luminary? Does it 
uh, require someone to get in touch with you to make sure that a name is represented? Uh, yeah, so we actually sent out information um, back in October, Maria, I believe it was, that's correct. Um, yes. As well as, you know, we were able to go through um, and make the do donation and the, put the name on the website. There's the opportunity to do that as well. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about sure, the sure. cutoff date and kind of what that looks like. Yeah, um, people can still call. We are trying to get our alphabetizing in order. So really, probably from here on, you, um, you may not be in alpha order. You can still get a luminary, um, but we have a... Um, we have a specified place for last minute uh, purchases. <laughs> so, um, so we welcome people to still do that. We know that it's a super busy time of year. And if you've forgotten, um, you can call us at 304-264-0406. Um, ladies at the front desk are, are poised to, to take those donations over the phone, but you can also go on our website um, I did learn that on the website, which we've just, um, which we've just gone through a sort of a, a, a redo of that, it's actually under events, not under donate. So you go to events, find Light Up a Life, and you can make your donation. There are three levels of, yes. um, of, Absolutely. of activity. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there are three levels. So there's a, um, a $20 luminary bag. Um, there is a $125 Luminary Angel, and then there's a Circle of Light that's $250. And one of the things that I think is really special, and I know um, you, are, um, you are sort of in this club, um, I looked last night um, and pulled out the Circles of Light. We send those to people afterwards so that you can use those to decorate your tree or just for the holidays. Um, we send the Circles of Light and the angels to folks and then we tell people they can take the tag off of the bag because we've learned our lesson. We've been doing this for eight, nine years. The first couple years we had like little white paper sandwich bags and if you've ever been to our hospice campus they were blowing all over the place that first year I was putting rocks in the bottom of the bags well we are much more sophisticated now we have these nice plastic recyclable bags that we put up year in and year out so we ask people not to take the bag that night but they can take the tag if they um, if they so choose take the tag leave the bag take the tag leave the bag right Nikki Right. I would add two more things to that, Maria, and we do have a special section um, on the side of our campus near the inpatient facility near the flagpole that is specifically designated um, to veterans, um, an entire veteran recognition um, section, which is always um, very much appreciated. And then the second piece is just, I would be remiss not to give a shout out to our team and the amount of volunteers that even make this event possible starting months ago. And if you walked into the office in the last two weeks and see the amount of manpower that goes into this event to make it happen, uh, it's, it's just truly amazing. So certainly much appreciation for everyone. And, and Rob made a point about what time we start. So that's what time the ceremony starts. But those of us who we have, we have shifts of volunteers coming on, um, on Sunday they start at about 8 or 8.30 um, to put out those bags. And you can imagine, so we're putting out 2,000 bags. We're putting little sandbags in each of the bags to hold them. We're putting little lights in the, in the bags, and then we attach the name to each bag. So that's a whole process. But we have these volunteers who have come year after year, and they know exactly what they're doing, um, but it, it really... There's a ton of them, and I always joke when I'm looking for volunteers, we need people who can bend down to do, yeah. <laughs> to do that because, you know, you, you might have a little sore back after, yeah. uh, after you take part. Yeah, the, the point you're making is, is valid, Maria, is a lot of effort goes into this, and in the front end, it is a fundraiser. But those are past us by the time we get to Sunday after, Sunday evening. It is just the re the sensation, the remembrance of loved ones, of people that we've known, 
and you you get a sense of peace and tranquility that it's hard to duplicate hard to find in our very busy world today and when you think about it um having people come and and just you know i think you put you hit the nail on the head bill you said about folks um, you know, having a very busy holiday season, lots of stuff going on, but this is a very tangible way that you remember people who have been important in your life. Um, so, yeah. And not only is it a, a, a tangible way, it is a very lovely way, a very reflective way of uh, people that have been important to you. Absolutely. Do you have the money targeted for a specific cause at hospice? Um, I think it's it's pretty much general operational uh, revenue. Correct, Nikki? Is that is that normally what we do? Absolutely. Especially Medicare tells us year after year we expect you to do more with less and uh, with the rate cuts and so forth. So we truly depend on on the generosity and community support to make the care happen. And this is kind of a good time, Nikki, to sort of talk about the all of the. I think you know people know hospice they know that hospice of the panhandle has been around since 1980 but we have other lines of service as well yes absolutely i think one of the last times i was on the call i call it um, the hidden gem but our center for grief support and loss um, certainly a service bereavement services available to anybody cared for in the hospice program um, their loved one or caregiver and we offer free bereavement counseling for 13 months after a death. And we also offer what we call pre-bereavement um, to assist the family in processing um, when a patient is dying. Um, we also provide that counseling service free to anyone in our community yet again, um, even if you didn't have someone um, who was cared for in our program. Oftentimes we'll get calls from schools or you know, someone that was maybe killed in a fatal accident, um, just looking to our counselors for the support um, and guidance to work through um, with that team. We also have a palliative care program. Um, we currently have um, palliative care in Berkeley and Jefferson County. We have two providers that go out into the home. I always like to tell people, think of this as your, um, ultimately your a specialist coming to your home rather than having to like go see a cardiologist um, our palliative care nurse practitioners come to the home to see you and this is really aimed at um, advanced illness serious illness care um, how do we help you stay in the comfort of your home stay out of the hospital and manage your advanced illness best um, and again that advanced illness doesn't necessarily mean something acute but rather some type of serious or chronic illness. Yeah. yeah. Individuals uh, think of hospice as just as these services you provide, but you mentioned something a couple minutes ago, Nikki, that I think needs to be elaborated on. Uh, the principal funding of hospice care is Medicare, Medicare or Medicaid, one of the two. But that does not cover the full expenses. Uh, uh, our hospice is a nonprofit organization, and I'm throwing out a number. I may be close, I may be wrong, but something like 80% is only covered by Medicare. So there's the other 20% that needs to be uh, gained through fundraiser activities. So there's two major fundraisers for the uh, for the year. This is one. But I don't view this as a fundraiser. Maria does. Maria. No, view, Maria does not. Well, no, no. I'm sorry. I was saying. <laughs> I, I, was, I actually was using it as a compliment, I Maria, know, because you are you are the heart and soul of the fundraising activity. Well, you're very kind. Well, you and you are. <laughs> uh, but uh, but and you put so much. Everything is is ensuring hospice continues to exist with your efforts. But from my perspective and from everybody else's perspective, the fundraising aspect of uh, Light Up a Life is lost. It is just the, the remembrance of what we see, the tribute to our loved ones that have passed. That is what I see and that's what I think the vast majority of people see. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. It's, you know, the reality is all of us have beloved memories, um, especially at the holidays that are really entangled with grief and loss. 
and really, you know, grief is everything that we cherish about love, and, and sometimes that's distorted by pain. So just <clears throat> being able to work through that and, and get this opportunity to the community that, um, you know, to help remember those pockets of memory that continue to serve really as testament um, to that beauty and love that we once felt um, in those memories. And I really think, you know, the luminaries are true reflections of our capacity to care for and really love someone so unconditionally that they've forever left a mark within they us. They stay. They stay with you, for sure, for sure. We're uh, shifting gears ever so, well, shifting gears quite a bit. There's a lot of comments about the buzz we're hearing in the background. <laughs> it's actually the queen bee. The queen bee is the one. Sir, following the buzz, yeah, it's her following. Buzzing. Yeah, <laughs> you're buzzing. From a, a, a technical, I'll explain this just so people don't think that they're going crazy or it's their radio or TV or whatever. We have a piece of equipment. Uh, we call it an ups, and uh, everything that we, most everything that we run, plugs into that, and it's a specific piece of equipment that generally speaking can handle that type of electrical load because if you, if you've seen inside the studio, there's I think five computers and countless it looks like spaghetti wire underneath the consoles here because there are so many pieces of electronics that are uh, required to do the show that we do send it to facebook send it to tv 10 get it to the towers and, and what have you well anyway that piece malfunctioned yesterday afternoon uh and uh this morning malfunctioned again so we had to pull it out and replace it with something else that's not quite up to the workload so until we get a new one of those uh we have a little bit of a buzz that manifests itself mostly when you bring up a telephone line which is unfortunate being is that we have a lot of telephone guests. <laughs> so this uh, just happened, uh, I guess, yesterday for the first time in the afternoon to Colin. Uh, he had reset it this morning. It malfunctioned again, so I had to remove it. And we're just dealing with it now until we can get it replaced. Or it's the queen bee in the background. That's the other alternative. The other alternative. Uh, there's another story, That's which is probably a better story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maria's yeah. just followed around by a bunch of bees. Yeah. Let me circle back to uh, Nikki. Uh, uh, Nikki, you've been with hospice for several years, You've uh, uh, and you've been involved with a lot of the light up of life. But this is your first year as being basically the, the queen bee of hospice. So I, I suspect you're kind I'm of, number two. <laughs> number you're right. Two. I suspect you're looking at this kind of a different light than what you have in years past. I uh, certainly am, Bill, and you're right. I've been with hospice January. I'll celebrate 14 years. Um, and I have really, this has caused me to pause this year and reflect in a whole different way. Um, and just you know, how do we continue to serve more people and be there and show up for our community? So uh, just a, a final thought from you, Nikki, uh, before we end our segment and head to our bottom of the hour break and light up night on the third. Yeah, just you know, ongoing generosity and gratitude for the community for continuing to support our efforts. But I would really recommend, uh, if you've never been to the luminary ceremony, to, uh, to make the trip out to Kearneysville and certainly uh, spend the evening with us, take a drive around the campus. Um, it's, it's really impactful and meaningful. And again, if you'd like to get a luminary for a loved one, is it too late? It is not too late. As, mentioned, as Maria mentioned, you can call um, our main office, 304-264-0406, um, or else head to our website, as she mentioned earlier, and um, we will be able to direct you where you need to be. Nikki, thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Have a safe drive to the office. Now that hopefully you can get there unobstructed. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Nikki Bidgirelli from Hospice of the Panhandle at 